Welcome back, everyone. Uh, took a couple of days off, uh, just needed to do that, and we're ready to dive back into some regular content. Before we get into today's uh, episode, though, I want to just give you the heads up. If you didn't see my announcement video, uh, I have finally followed through and made the AI History Music channel, uh, and we've got four videos up so far and they're actually doing pretty well for a brand new channel uh, so i'll put the link down in the description it's called songs of history and actually one of the songs uh which is a song about the iron brigade is already up on music streaming services so you can find it on amazon itunes uh should eventually show up on spotify as well and i'll be adding some of the best ones to that as well some are going to be serious some are funny like the one that's called the ballad of dan sickle's leg which i am pretty proud of how that turned out but uh today we're going to be taking a look at another video from jay foreman from the map man i saw my friend mr terry did this one yesterday so i thought i'd take a stab at it as well it's called weird maps win elections gerrymandering explained and i should mention of course if they don't i'm sure they probably will that we actually don't even pronounce that right gerrymandering is is named after one of our american vice presidents his name was actually elbridge gary g-e-r-r-y somehow we stopped saying gerrymandering and started saying gerrymandering but his name was gary uh, so this will be an interesting topic for us to talk about, especially because we've just gone through the process of redistricting in the United States, and there was a lot of fighting in courts and in legislatures about how these lines should be drawn. So I'll put the link in the description to the original, as always. And I want to thank uh, Aran Majid, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Aran, uh, who just signed up as a patron a few days ago. Thank you so much for your support. Could not do this without you. Let's dive into this one. Can we do an episode about politics? No! All right, what if it's about politics in a foreign country? Oh, that sounds fun. Great! Welcome to Map Men. We're the men, and here's the map. Map Men, Map Men, Map, Map, Map Men, Men. This is a map of the 435 districts that the USA is split into for the purposes of voting for members of Congress. And I just want to point out that here in Ohio, compared to a lot of places, our map's not that bad. It used to be a lot worse. So I. I live in this district right here, which kind of, um, so you have the district in the far corner, northeast corner of Ohio, and then I'm in this district here. I'm actually just five miles from the next district, uh, and our district still runs pretty far, but it used to run all the way down to Portsmouth, which is the southern end of the state. It was like five hours from one end of our district to the other. 135 districts that the USA is split into for the purposes of voting for members of Congress, the powerful people who pick the policies the president can pass. Because elections have to be fair, it's important that the map is fair. That's why every 10 years the boundaries get redrawn to make sure every district always contains, as closely as possible, the same number of people, about 700,000. Which means that this map is actually a very handy way of glancing at population That's density true. across the United States. For example, sparsely populated Wyoming has just one district and just one representative. Hello. And densely populated New York has 26. Hello. 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 That makes sense, but if you zoom in, some of it doesn't make sense. Lots of districts have very suspicious looking shapes. Buh? Gah? Fnuh? See, like that kind of stuff sh should absolutely never happen. They've got to at least try and... I understand there's a certain level of this that's always going to be at play. And it drives me nuts when people say, well, we need to have ind independent commissions. Is anybody really independent? Everybody has biases. Everybody has opinions. Everybody has leanings. There might be people who are more independent, but how are you going to judge who's independent to put on these commissions? Do districts really have to be so just to get the populations equal? Nope. There's something more sinister going on. And to find out what it is, we have to go back to 1812. Where are we? We're still in England, but it's 1812. Shouldn't we be in Boston? The story starts in Boston, in the office of the governor of Massachusetts, Elbridge Gerry. With a G. With a G. Yep. There was an election coming up, and it looked like Gerry was about to lose his job. But his advisors came up with a bill that could practically guarantee a victory for their party without having to win any extra votes. All they had to do was change the map. But how does changing the map change the results? That's what Elbridge Gerry said. How does changing the map change the results? Allow us to demonstrate with the use of state-of-the-art graphics. Let's say there's a hypothetical rectangular state with two parties, the Chocolate Raisin Party and the Smarty Party. The Smarty Party is more popular, obviously. A fair result that you'd expect is three Smarty districts and two Chocolate Raisin districts. But watch what happens if someone from the Smarty Party is in charge of drawing the map. 
They can make it yep. so that Smarties control every district. Smarty indeed. But more sneakily, watch what happens if someone from the Chocolate Raisin Party is in charge of drawing the map. They can mathematically make three Chocolate Raisin districts and just two Smarty, even though- All with the exact same number of votes. Yeah, that's 100% what, what this does. Now, what some people don't seem to understand is that this doesn't affect things like presidential elections or Senate elections. It can't. Because what you're dealing with there are statewide votes. This only happens within states. So we're talking about congressional districts and you're talking about state senate and state house districts. Uh, because within the, you know, for example, Ohio, there's no way to redraw the boundaries inside of Ohio to change Ohio's vote for president or to change our statewide votes for senate. But you can make it so that our congressional map looks a certain way. Oh, there are more Smarties. Disgusting, shrivelly things. But Massachusetts wasn't a perfect rectangle with voters arranged into unrealistically neat rows. Wyoming is. In order to achieve their desired results on a real map of thousands of human voters, Gary's team would have to draw their boundaries using two techniques, packing and cracking. Cracking is when you break up a community of opposition voters and dissolve them into surrounding districts, making their votes powerless. A bit like giving all your dinner guests a tiny bit of vodka in every part of the meal spread across the evening, so everyone gets very, very slightly, barely detectably drunk. And packing is when you do the opposite, and pack as many opposition yeah. supporters as possible into just one district, making their votes wasted. A bit like giving all of your vodka to just one of your dinner guests, keeping everyone else completely sober except Uncle Steve. Once the concept was finally explained to Elbridge Gerry, he said he didn't like it and thought it was... Highly disagreeable. But he signed the bill anyway like a coward and history was made. And so he was governor of Massachusetts at that time, but he does uh, serve as vice president. Gerry's team looked at a map of where their supporters lived. And after a heavy night of packing and cracking, this is what they came up with, including this improbably bendy, sort of lizard-shaped district. The new map caused quite a stir and caught the attention of political cartoonist Elkanah Tisdale and his editor Nathan Hale at the Boston Gazette. Hey, have you seen Governor Gary's new district map? Yeah, looks like a salamander. <laughs> you mean a Garymander? <laughs> and that's there how the is. process of manipulating maps for political gain became known as gerrymandering. And then everyone started pronouncing it wrong. Which is how it became known as gerrymandering, which was good news for Gerry, who'd probably be delighted that his name hasn't technically gone down in history for this bad thing. Which brings us back to the present day. Anyway, in a proper democracy, such obvious cheating would have been instantly spotted and nipped in the bud. But due to America's quirky, stunningly undemocratic system where it's politicians themselves who draw their own district maps. Yeah, I mean, but again, my argument with this, and I'm not saying it's wrong, I, I think gerrymandering is awful and I, and I wish there were easy solutions and maybe there are some some of you are saying yeah there is one though uh but the problem is and this is the same problem we have with any form of government same problem we have with any court decision is that it all goes back to the pesky human mind and heart and motivation all of these have to be done by humans so in the case of the united states where this typically comes up is we have a census every 10 years. So in 2020, we had the census. And once those census results come in, then there's redistricting. Because, for example, in Ohio, every census that I've been alive for, we have lost congressional districts. Because of the, the way the population has shifted, Ohio proportionally has lost population compared to the rest of the country. Now, I'm not saying we've numerically lost population, but proportionally we have. And so our number of representatives continues to go down. And, and so then you have to make new lines because you lose a district. Uh, and so maybe instead of having 19 districts, now you have 17 districts. So you have to draw 17 district lines. And so then whatever party's in power has more authority over the people making those lines. And then it gets a challenge in court and you have to go back and revisit it. And so in the aftermath of the 2020 elections, in time for the 2022 congressional elections, uh, there were a number of fights over how these lines were drawn. And in states run by Democrats, many times the Democrats got to draw the lines and it made their position stronger. In states run by Republicans, the Republicans drew the lines. It almost ends up being a wash. I think I looked at a statistic that gave the Democrats maybe a one or a two seat edge 
from 2020 to 2022 based on how the lines were drawn. So it wasn't a significant difference. But still, it's a problem when you look at lines like that one. Gerrymandering, gerrymandering, very much continues to this day. Yep. And it's more sophisticated, high-tech, and openly brazen than ever before or anywhere else in the world. It can be seen in swing states all across America. A shower head, a car with wings, one of those old-fashioned hand drill things, a dinosaur, a watering can, the shape on the flag of the island. Look at that Maryland district. That's insanity. That's absolute insanity. <laughs> Is that the Isle of Man flag? And a metal detector. Holy cow. I want to go back and see where that one was. A watering can, the shape on the flag of the Isle of Man, a metal. Texas 35th District. How ridiculous is that? It's like outside of Austin and part of San Antonio. That's nuts. To a bale of hay, a knight sitting on his horse the wrong way, a rabbit in a hat, and a bobbit and a spoon. Super soaker seahorse Cameroon. So I just have to say that this shows the skill involved in writing some of these songs because they have to not only make the song flow and, and make it rhyme and things like that, but they have to do so within the limited scope of the shape that these gerrymandered districts take on. Uh, really impressed by that. A plume of steam from a mug of tea Donald Duck being kicked by Goofy A carpet stain from a naughty pup A mouse leaning over with a big thumbs up Snake dog, bat dog, snake duck, snake We'll be right back after the break Thank you Well that was fun But gerrymandering Gerrymandering Everyone says gerrymandering Everyone's wrong Jerry Everyone's wrong, that's right consequences. North Carolina In the 2018 Did he say North Carolina? Alright, listen I'll allow it just because of how badly Americans regularly butcher the names of places in the UK. At term elections, Republicans won 10 out of 13 seats with just 51% of the votes. Oh, he oh. Republicans won 12 out of 16. Now I just think they're doing it on purpose. 16 seats with just 52% of the votes. And the Democrat Party does it too. Yeah. Ma Rai Lorne. Democrats won 7 out of 8 seats with just 63% of the votes. So then why don't they just make squiggly districts illegal? Oh. So when I said earlier about how overall there was a slight Democrat advantage to how districts were redrawn, redrawn for the 2022 election, uh, when you look at the, per the proportion of the national vote, so if you take all the votes in all the congressional districts for that election, uh, and you look at the percentage between just, I mean, because there's third parties too, but if you look at just the percentage between Republicans and Democrats, uh, the Republicans, I believe, were would have been expected based on that proportion of the vote to end up with 224 seats in Congress. They ended up with 222. So the drawing of the lines ever so slightly favors the Democrats, but by a pretty negligible margin. It's basically when you... When you look at individual districts, it looks awful and it looks really unfair. But when you look at it from a national level, it actually balances out pretty even. Oh, if only it were that simple. Sometimes a district that looks sillily squiggly has been made squiggly for a good reason. Republican voters and Democrat voters tend to clump together with their own kind, with Republicans yeah. mostly in the countryside and Democrats mostly in big cities. This is called self-sorting, and it's only getting more extreme. You know, we talk about cliques in high school, for example, where, you know, like the football players like to hang out together. My son, he's a soccer player, or football for the rest of the world, and the people he hangs out with tend to be other soccer players. And that makes sense. We like to be around people with whom we have common interests and common beliefs, and there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when we start thinking people who are like me are better than people who are like you. That's where it becomes a real problem. The problem with self-sorting is if your district has no opposition in it, your politician won't have to work hard and True. you won't have to bother to vote. And so, to encourage healthy, competitive elections, legislators make districts squiggly on purpose, encouraging politicians to broaden their appeal and prevent politics from being polarized. Competitiveness is not the only good reason for bonkers looking map squiggles. Take a look at Illinois. In central so Chicago. So I like the fact that they're actually pointing out some of the reasons why gerrymandering can be a good thing. Uh, obviously, it is done by both parties to benefit themselves. And unfortunately, that's 
that's really, isn't that most of us, isn't that our biggest complaint with politics in general, is that all too often, instead of doing what is best for the people they represent, they're just doing what's going to guarantee they get reelected. So it becomes kind of a self-fulfilling thing where I run for re-election so that I can run for re-election so that I can run for re-election. Chicago, you'll find the famous Earmus district, Illinois 4th, which wraps around the 7th, barely holding itself together with the I-294 highway. Both the 4th and 7th districts are solid Democrat, so why in the name of all that jazz were they split this way? Hmm. Members of Congress don't just make up numbers for their party. Each one is supposed to represent their community. A so-called community of interest can mean people from a certain industry, or housing type, or education, or race. For decades, Unavoidably serious topic. In America, minorities were terribly underrepresented in Congress. After much campaigning, in 1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed, which made it illegal for any state to do anything that made it difficult for minorities to get elected. Which included drawing voting districts that broke up minority communities. What this practically means is, every state is now required to pack voters of the same race into fewer districts. No one wants it to be necessary, but it's the only way to make Congress reflect America's true diversity instead of its true racism. Which explains this. This is a mostly African-American community, and these are two mostly Latino communities. So immediately we can see the problem. You can make districts compact, or you can make them competitive, or you can make them keep a community. But you can't make them all three. Right. That's what makes fixing gerrymandering so hard. No one can agree on which is the most important C. Which is why all attempts over the last few decades at fixing gerrymandering have produced various amounts of not much success. That's really, really a good point. Uh, it's not just as simple as party splits. You know, there. I think there was a big debate on this down in Alabama in this latest round of gerrymandering arguments and court fights and things like that was how they were dispersing the african-american vote amongst the districts and it's just one of multiple layers of complication and that's what i was saying earlier when you are deciding who's going to be the one to decide this first of all the people who are deciding who are going to be the ones who decide it they all have their own biases they all have their own motivations among these things we just talked about and then once they choose the people that decide, those people who get chosen, they have their own biases and, and backgrounds and motivations and desires with all of this. It's As long as people are involved, it is a impossibly flawed system. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try to get it right, but it just makes it so hard. Including, most notably, in California, with the strong support of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, it's time to say, hasta la vista to uh, gerrymandering. <laughs> But in almost every case, any attempt to fix it has only made things worse, right. serving only to highlight how impossible it is to make everybody happy. Since we're not in America, it's easy for us as outsiders, living in a country whose democracy is practically perfect in every way, to tell Americans how they should... I love the steam came out of his ears. ...run theirs. So, just in time for the next round of redistricting in 2031, here are Mattman's top tips for how the USA can fix gerrymandering. This should be good. One. Instead of giving districts boring numbers, make legislators give them actual names. The longer the name, the harder the shape will be to justify. That's a great point. I like Two, that. Get computers to draw your districts for you. AI is a powerful tool these days, and the robots know what's best for us. Three, abolish geographical districts and divide the country by communities of internet. The people who share your priorities that need representing in government are all across the country and not just physically close to you. 4. Increase the number of members of Congress from 435 to 435,000, so each district contains just one street. You can't say it wouldn't work. And 5. I do like the idea, and I know that my friend Matt Beat has suggested this, that we find a way to increase the size of Congress. 435 is just not enough, and I think it would simplify the issues that we have with gerrymand gerrymandering, even if we just doubled the number of districts. Um, or it might complicate it even more. Uh, and you might argue, well, where are we going to fit them all? Well, if you look at the UK, if you go into their House of Parliament, like their um, uh, the House of Commons, it's tiny. It's super tiny. It's way smaller than the House of Representatives chamber is in Washington. And they have twice as many as we do. I mean, they've got a, a ton of them, and their population is far lower than ours. So a member of Parliament... In the UK represents so many fewer people, that's a terrible way to describe it, uh, represents significantly fewer people 
than a member of Congress does in the United States. And they do it in a much smaller room. Because, listen, when you go there, very rarely is the entire Congress in the room at one time. They're coming and going. My daughter and I several years ago went and observed the Senate, and we heard Senator Schumer speaking. There were literally like eight senators in the room when he was speaking. It was empty. It was crazy. Stop worrying about democracy and just let a dictator take over. Before we start blaming America's politicians for cheating at democracy, it's important to remember gerrymandering is only possible because voters are predictable. You can't draw right. lines around how people are going to vote if you don't know how they're going to vote. That's an excellent point. It, it's predictable because people in certain areas tend to vote a certain way, but it does occasionally change. It just doesn't change overnight. The county I live in has been blue all my life. And for those who don't know, we typically say blue to mean Democrat and red to mean Republican. It's been blue all my life until the last election. For the first time that I can recall, we elected or we voted for a Republican for president. Uh, and for the first time in my uh, my whole life, we have a Republican congressman where I live. That never happened. In fact, you couldn't get elected to anything without a D next to your name. It was that predictable. And there are a lot of places where it's the same with the Republicans. Today, more than ever before, people support political parties like football teams and are less likely to ever allow their minds to be changed. That's true. Twitter. And the more this happens, the harder it is to draw anything apart from depressingly predictable districts. In the last election, 81% of Americans lived in districts where it was extremely obvious who was going to win, yep. leaving it to just a tiny handful of swing voters to decide the result for the whole country. And it's the same thing with the, the presidential election. Most of our states, we know how they're going to go. Like Ohio, I live in Ohio. I mean, it's a 100% given that Donald Trump's going to win Ohio this fall. It's 100% given that Kamala Harris is going to win California and New York. Uh, Donald Trump's going to win Wyoming. I mean, you know, there's maybe six or seven states that are going to decide the election. It's impossible to draw a map that will make everybody happy, but fighting for fairness is worth the faff. If voters can at least feel their voices being heard, they'll be encouraged to turn up and vote, and to vote for their real favourite, making democracy more meaningful. Until then, the American political system will remain an antiquated basket case that enables those with power to rig the system for themselves and block any meaningful progress for the foreseeable future. Glad we don't live in a country like that. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed that. Uh, it was the right mix of comedy and information, uh, but also a serious kind of observation about the process. I thought it was really well done. It's one of the better takes I've seen on gerrymandering. Uh, at least on YouTube, and I think they did a great job with it. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, how, how do you see it? What do you think is a solution that would work? Uh, and why do you think that? Uh, or do you agree with me that there really just is no good solutions? Uh, are no good solutions. Man, I'm just all over the place with what I'm how I'm talking today. I apologize. My mind's not always there sometimes. But uh, I want to thank uh, Philip in Alfeld, Germany. Thank you so much for your support, Philip, as well as my friend Jonathan, uh, who lives just up the road from me in Cleveland for your support on Patreon. Jonathan, uh, I've gotten a chance to hang out with him in Europe, and I'm going to be going to an Ohio State-Michigan game with him in just a couple of months. I'm pretty excited about that. Thanks for watching.